our carbon footprint. It's the amount of greenhouse gases we humans release to the atmosphere, and a lot of it comes from our energy use. Let's meet six families from three countries in very different parts of the world. All use energy and all have a carbon footprint. Representing the post-industrial world, from Prior Lake, Minnesota. Hi, we're the Presslers. We're the Langs from Howard Lake, Minnesota. From the rapidly emerging economies. Hi, we are the Honda family from New Delhi. Hi, I'm Dr. Lata Sharma. I'm from New Delhi. This is my family. And from the developing world. I am Amin Morris. I live in Moyoka, Cameroon. Here is my family. Hi, I am Anumdem Nicodemus. I live in a Kata village, Muyuka subdivision here in Cameroon. This is my family. Six families, three countries. What do their carbon footprints look like? And what does managing carbon emissions mean for them? Our families share a comfortable lifestyle in their own countries, but the economies of their countries are very different, and so is their access to energy. In the post-industrial world, the amount and types of energy our American families use is in the range of families in Canada. It's a little higher than the other post-industrial economies of Japan, the European Union, or Australia. A big part of the difference is transportation. We're much more spread out. Still, energy use in our American households is fairly typical of the 15% of the world's population that lives in post-industrial economies. So what is the total energy used by households in the United States? To get an idea of the amount, multiply the Lang's energy use by 110 million households. That comes out to be about half of the energy used in the United States each year. What about the rest? The other half is used in our schools, at our jobs, to provide health care, to produce goods, and for the many services that define our modern lifestyle. When you add up all the energy used in America, it comes out to about 20% of the world's energy use. And we use that energy to produce 25% of the world's goods and services. Altogether, the post-industrial economies are using a little more than half the world's energy, producing 70% of the world's goods and services and putting out half the world's carbon. Energy demand in these countries is stable or growing slowly, and their carbon footprints are doing the same. India is in the middle of an economic revolution. Its demand for energy is surging. The Honda and Sharma households are on the leading edge, and that shows in their standard of living and their household energy use. They use the same types of energy as our American families, but on a smaller scale. No heating, less driving, and fewer and smaller appliances. Energy use in our Indian households is about a third of what is used by our American families. This difference is reflected in their carbon footprints. Most Indian households use even less energy. Still, there are 200 million households in India. Households account for 20% of energy use in India, and their use of energy is growing. And India is well on its way to joining the post-industrial world, which means that its non-household energy use is growing too. Right now, India uses 4% of the world's energy to produce 2% of the world's goods and services. India's carbon emissions are the fifth largest in the world. But India is not the only country with a rapidly growing economy. China's economy is growing even faster than India's. China's carbon emission levels passed those of the United States in 2005. Even though Chinese households have small footprints, there are 400 million of them and China's commercial and industrial sectors are growing rapidly. As their economies grow, China and India will use more and more energy. And now we come to our families in Cameroon. They represent the emerging middle class of the developing world. Their energy use is low, 15% of what our American families use. Most of their energy comes from renewable sources, and that means that their carbon footprint is less than 4% of ours. Because there is little industrial and commercial activity, the 3 million households in Cameroon make up 90% of Cameroon's energy use. Even so, the fossil fuels used for industrial and commercial activities make up most of the country's carbon footprint. With respect to their carbon emissions, 
Cameroon is at the same level that the United States was in 1843, at the onset of our industrial revolution. But with access to modern energy and communication, they already have one foot in the modern age.